Before I talk about this 3D printer, I have to admit, I have a bit of a grudge against Form Labs. You see, back when I was writing my final year dissertation in university on the accessibility of 3D printing, I had ascended something along the lines of this. While FDM 3D printing has clearly become low cost and easy to use, other technologies such as SLA have not, with these resin systems remaining at multi hundred thousand dollar price points, being messy and not user friendly. This was a true fact statement at the time. One week later in September of 2012, Formlabs dropped the Form 1 on Kickstarter, a true SLA 3D printer for under 3000 US dollars, ready to run out of the box. This of course made my entire justification null and void and I had to delete that entire paragraph, though honestly that entire document I wrote all the way back then is probably just as dated by now. But seriously, Formlabs set a new standard for affordable SLA then, so how far have they come with this, the Form 2, and is it really worth three and a half thousand US dollars? Well, watch to find out. Let's quickly cover specs. The Form 2 comes ready to run out of the box, only requiring you to fit the resin tank, build platform and resin cartridge of your choice. It has a build volume of 145 by 145 by 175 millimeters, which may sound small, but keeping in mind that SLA 3D printers tend to be a smaller build volume due to the higher detail they can resolve, and this is actually a larger SLA that you'll find, especially at this price point. It's quite similar to the Moai that I tested a little while ago, but it's got a little bit more X and Y to play with. If you haven't heard of SLA 3D printers before, it stands for Stereolithography Apparatus and uses a laser directed at a set of spinning mirrors called a galvometer. The rotations of the mirrors and laser are precisely controlled to direct it exactly at the right X and Y coordinates on the print surface, which in the case of the Form 2 is a PDMS coated acrylic tray. The liquid resin is hardened or polymerized by this UV laser and the prints are created upside down as the print surface slowly raises out of the resin tray. Separating each layer has always been tricky with this sort of technology due to the suction forces generated so the Form 2 moves the tray slightly and then uses a wiper to ensure clean releases each time. If all of this sounds a bit like jargon, because it kind of is, then uh, don't worry. The point of SLA technology is it's far more accurate than FDM is and capable of ridiculously high detail. Model makers, take note. Formlabs provide their own software called Preform, and I have to say, it's only slightly short of pure magic when it comes to preparing files for this 3D printer. It prepares support material for you, the correct print orientation, it can do it all in one click, and it can even give you a print estimate and sends it all over Wi-Fi to the 3D printer. You can do manual supports if you wish, and yeah, this software is pretty darn awesome. You can interface the machine, as I said, with Wi-Fi or over USB and the files send over really fast. I use this on Wi-Fi constantly and I haven't had a single issue with the system during my testing. Despite its ease of use, the software won't do something that's very important for resin 3D printing technologies and that is hollowing your 3D prints to save on resin. You see, you can't just have a infill like an FDM machine would have Instead, a file would print solid if you send it to this machine. So what you can do instead is actually model in your own crazy 3D infill that is possible, or you can actually just hollow out your parts with drainage holes. Um, I do recommend though, for example, with this cat, I hollowed it out completely by extending the lower face and then just cutting it out, cutting it off, leaving a complete hollow void. So it's better to do something like that rather than a small drainage hole, because in my experience, when you go to post cure your parts, the resin just leaks out over time and it's very difficult to clean it out completely, leaving marks on the final prints. It's also important to know that the software will arrange parts for the best printability, but not for the most economic resin use, with large rafts and support material use. The Form 2 is a complete ecosystem and you must use their resins, which are pretty pricey at $149 US per litre for their standard grey, which is what I used for these parts here. I did however notice that the resin had far less smell than any other I've tested, which is awesome and made working near this machine a lot nicer. But like every other liquid resin 3D printing system out there, you should not touch the liquid resins with your bare hands. It is actually toxic and you need to make sure the parts are fully cured before you handle them. So I'll go into that in a minute, but basically like other ones, even though this machine is a lot more resolved, you should not touch the uncured resin in the system. Alrighty, so what about print quality? Well, this is a first on Maker's Muse. I did not have a single failure on the Form 2. 
not once during my testing of this machine. So consider the fact that I've only run about one liter th of resin through it, actually not even, I mean all these parts out here, I still haven't finished that one liter of resin, which is pretty impressive, it does go a long way, but I have not had a single failure on this machine despite what I threw at it, even just using defaults hitting go and print and walking away. The machine is completely automatic and even fills its tray by itself using a special rubber bung at the bottom of the resin uh, resin cartridge. So it makes sure the level's correct at all times. You don't even have to worry about it overflowing or running out of resin during a print. It literally is a fully automatic system. Post-processing SLA prints, like I described in my review of the Moai, is quite messy as you do not want to touch the uncured resin as I mentioned earlier. Gloves are a must. So Formlabs have gone all out in terms of post-processing, providing a finishing station with this machine which is two vats you can use with isopropyl alcohol or even like a fancy tool for holding the bed as you remove it at an angle to remove prints from the machine. To be honest, I didn't even need to use that. I just got the hang of just flicking it off into the bath of IPA. And my kit actually came with one of the buckets damaged, unfortunately, so I only used one bucket of IPA to clean my prints. And honestly, that was enough. I mean, I would clean them in IPA, take them out into the sun to cure, and then they would set hard. Curing is an important process to fully harden the resin after printing and I did use the free power of the sun as mentioned. However, Formlabs actually do produce a whole range of post-processing accessories, including a UV uh, oven almost, to cure the prints afterwards, should you want to do everything in a lab environment. So some of these prints here will be featured in their own upcoming videos, but let's take a look at the Gaia Anderson cat that I printed at 100 microns. Yes, 100 microns, like you would do it in FDM, but why does it look so good. Well, that's the added precision of SLA with the pinpoint laser accuracy, you can get a finer surface finish even at the same layer height than you'd get on FDM. So also important to note that at 100 microns is as coarse as you can go on the Form 2. You can go as low as 25 microns in layer height if you wish. Just expect ridiculously long print times. For smaller models, I used 50 microns, for example, with this Maker Coin and the results were absolutely stunning. I am somewhat addicted to the standard grey. I must admit, as an industrial designer, it makes me happier than it should printing in this colour. So I printed a lot of things. This is the Flutterbat model that I like to test support material capability on. And I just let the machine do its own thing using complete automatic settings and to show what prints look like straight out of the machine after they've been cured. Uh, the support material is actually quite brittle and sharp, so I do recommend using safety glasses and actually gloves when you take it off because you might end up getting little bits of uh, acrylic UV cured resin splinters. But the process is actually really easy and you do get left with, left with tiny little dimples where the support material was. Unfortunately, it is uh, impossible to avoid for some prints, but you can just snip them off and sand them back with high grit sandpaper to remove the evidence of them all altogether. SLA printers are made for figurines and scale models in my opinion. And this rocket model created by the incredibly talented Tanya just goes to show the detail you can achieve. I scaled the original down to just 25% and it also doesn't take that long to print. With all parts of this model printed together at 50 microns at layer height in two and a half hours. So yeah, if I was Warhammer, I'm not sure how I'd feel about technology such as this. So basically I've sung high praise for the Form 2 this entire video. And to be honest, it does deserve it. But does it have a downside? Well, much like how Apple tries to keep you within their own ecosystem, the Form 2 requires Form Resin, which is more expensive than other brands. It needs Form Resin vats that are consumables and they are quite expensive in their own right. They're actually only designed for about two liters of resin. And although you can coat them yourself to get more life, really, how much is your time worth? And that's where it sort of starts to come down. Like three and a half K is the starting price, which makes the Form 2 quite expensive of its class. But let's be real, Formlabs defined this class. Before the Form 1, there was pretty much nothing under 50 grand that was even comparable. And even now, the pure ease of use I got from this machine is almost unheard of in the hobby 3D printing market. So what is your time worth? If you're a hobbyist and just want to print high detail sometimes, but you have time to tinker on a 3D printer, tweak and tune your machine, then the Form 2 is probably out of your price range if you're doing that sort of thing. And I'd recommend something more like the Moai or even the Wanhao D7, which a review for which is coming soon. However, if your time is worth a lot, 
like you're in a university environment, you're in a small office environment, or you're a model maker by trade and you want to print things where you know it's going to work and even have to look at it till the fi print finishes, then yeah, the machine pretty much pays for itself. I mean, 150 US dollars of resin, if you were printing commercially, I would have paid that off, no problem. There's also a suite of different resins available for this machine. This is the standard UV gray, but there's also clear, there's also high impact strength resins, flexible resins, there's a whole suite that Formlabs developed that you can use on that machine. So suffice to say, I've been having an absolute blast running this machine and I'll be extremely sad when I see it go back to Formlabs headquarters. So that's gonna do it for this video. What do you guys think? Is there a better alternative to printing high detail 3D prints reliably and easily? Uh, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video on Makers Museum and want to see future 3D printing tips, tricks, and reviews, maybe consider subscribing. I'd love to have you on board. My name's Angus, and look forward to seeing you again very shortly here on Makers Muse. Happy printing, guys. Bye.